It, he's getting fucked with a cactus in this movie. Like metaphorically, but like I wouldn't be surprised. If there were if there had been a third one. That would right. have gotten to that point. They were about what else do we do tomorrow? Well, his ass hasn't had a cactus in it yet, so <laughs> might as well. <laughs> Horrible, but true. Hey everybody, welcome to Fess Up, where the Fess sisters help spice up your conversations with unique and thought-provoking questions. That's right, we're breaking the ice with a sledgehammer! Kablooey! Kablooey kablammy. I've switched it up. Hmm, I like it. Kablooey evokes color and... <laughs> blue, specifically. It specifically evokes blue, like a lot of blue. My name is Amy Fess, and I am the oldest Fess. My name is Marissa Fess, and I am the mediumist Fess. Mm hmm. And I am Ina Fess, and I am the mildest Fess. Oh, so now we're spicy, medium, mild. I like it. All right. We all know I'm the mildest. I mean, I think that makes sense. I think I'm pretty spicy. Yeah. So, guys, this is our 50th episode. Woo! Huzzah. We're so old. We're halfway to dying. <laughs> oh. We're in our middle-aged episode. <laughs> so this is our 50th episode. We want to do something fun. We want to do something different. So this episode is going to be different than our usual episodes. And um, if you listened a couple weeks ago, a couple episodes back, we talked about doing a kill count for Home Alone, Home Alone 2, and The Parent Trap. Because as we said, we firmly believe that Kevin McAllister wanted to kill and in fact is Jigsaw in the making. Absolutely. He's Jigsaw for children. Jigsaw for children. And I do, I personally am of the belief in the fan theory. And there are some points in here that I do feel like even prove this theory where Kevin McAllister does eventually become Jigsaw himself. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Whether or not he, like, changes his name to John Kramer and does all this is up to anybody's interpretation. We don't know the exact specifics, but I firmly believe he just grows up to be the serial killer Jigsaw. <laughs> Trust me, I will be talking about it. <laughs> um, so the way this is going to work for this episode, we have gone through, watched these movies again, um, made sure we got all or at least the majority of the traps written down and anything counted, anything that happened to people. Some of them are quote unquote pranks, but you know. Particularly parent trap. Yeah, parent trap. It's more like pranks, but God, do they go way too ham. Yes. They took it too far. They took it too far for sure. So I think in this one, we're going to read through all of the traps and we'll discuss them one by one, try to jog our memories and remind ourselves what happened, what the pros and cons are, what it is looking like for the people's well-being after each trap, and um, decide if they would die or not, and to see how many times Kevin would have killed people were this true to life, or Hallie and Annie. So I think what we'll do, we'll talk about them, we'll go through all the stuff, and then we will decide together, is this killing, is this not killing, or is this sort of an accidental, it wasn't intentional killing, but they would have died, sort of a manslaughter. Okay. Well, to be fair, I think almost everything is manslaughter because I don't think Kevin wants to kill anyone. That's debatable. That's what we're about to debate. <laughs> One, that's what we're about to debate. Two, these are strange men breaking in his house. He does not want to die. He will kill. I guess. There's some justification in that. Three, this man, this man, this child will become Jigsaw. He's a serial killer in the making. I guarantee. We already had this conversation. This kid wanted to kill. There's some justification in him, like, self-defense killing these home intruders. Yeah. But there's also some absolutely not justified glee that he seems to express about it. Absolutely. He's too excited for this opportunity. Yeah, I mean, so some of his things are just for the laughs. I will say also, before we get into this, that this man, well, I keep calling him a man, Kevin McAllister is out here at nine years old, a child prodigy in the area of engineering. Like, Jesus, fuck this kid. Not he's only is he hyper intelligent planning this stuff, but like he can rig up stuff that I couldn't even do in my almost 30 advanced age. He truly also set all that up in like two hours. Like He did. <laughs> yes, so fast. He's really impressive. 
fast, efficient, such a good plan. And this is why I'm saying he becomes Jigsaw because who else is an engineering genius? Jigsaw. I mean, either he's going to be like a Disney Imagineer or he's going to be Jigsaw. <laughs> There's no in between. This, this child is not about to become an Imagineer. He thirsts for blood. No. You're looking too far on the bright side here. <laughs> this boy wanted to hurt people. <laughs> okay. He came in here out for blood. He did, he did. And we shall discuss this now. So Home Alone 1, the first big prank that happens, Harry and Marv are our two bad guys. And for yes. those of you who may not have watched Home Alone in a recent amount of time, Harry is the short one, played by Joe Pesci from My Cousin Vinny. And Marv, I don't really know what else he was in or what his name is. I should look I think that up. his first name is Howard, but I can't remember his last name. He was in this bizarre film that I did not enjoy called Bushwhacked. Oh, yes, I remember that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His name's Daniel Stern. Oh. Is he related to Howard Stern? He looks like he could be, doesn't he? I guess my mind thought he was named Howard because of the Stern last name. That could be. Siblings, David Stern. That's it. Oh. Not Howard. Perhaps they're related in the same way that we are related to Val Kilmer. Right. Which is to say we have the same last name within the family tree. Like, it was married away from us a couple times. But um, we have no actual evidence that we're related except for grandparents <laughs> being like, that can't be a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Essentially, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. But he, I think, pretty much was like a very physical comedian actor because wasn't Bushwhacked also one where he's just getting beat up on the whole time? Yes. Absolutely, it was. And that aspect was fun. This man is like, destroy my body and I will thank you for it. <laughs> okay, Harry and Marv. That's Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. So the first big trap is Harry comes up to the door. He ends up getting shot in the groin by a BB gun rifle through the mail slot of the door. Yeah, so clearly not a kill. This was just meant to torture. He wished that he had access to a real gun there, I would guarantee. That would have ended that immediately. They would not have come back if it were a real gun. Whoa, absolutely. Absolutely, they would not have come back. Yeah, that's really the main reason why it was not an intentional kill, because he knew it wouldn't work, but he probably yeah. wished it would. Absolutely. Right. Also, though, maybe, like, I feel like worst case scenario, he could have lost a ball. He probably could have lost a ball or gotten, like, a bruise or something that would be detrimental to his penile health. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying is is that's it, it, co it could have murdered his penis. Oh, I just had a terrible thought. What? I'm not going to say it. That's too terrible. All okay, right. then don't. <laughs> I was going to say, what if it went up the hole? Okay, um, so... <laughs> Devastating. <laughs> Devastating! Okay, I think we can all agree he's going to live on that one. Yes. yes. The next one is Marv is shot in the forehead by that same BB gun when he puts his head through the doggy door. Mm -hmm. Which, why do they have a doggy door? They don't have a dog, but... Maybe they used to. I guess maybe. With that family, they could have killed it. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> they don't take good care of anything. I'm surprised their house looks so nice. Plus, if Kevin is as, you know, bloodthirsty as we say... Yeah. That's always the first sign of a killer, right? That's so <laughs> that true. That's true. No, I, that, he could have lost an eye or something, but I don't think he would have gotten uh, killed, no. Yeah, I don't think that he would die from that. It could honestly give him a concussion. It was pretty point blank. I'm going to be real. Mm -hmm. So again, torture, but not murder. It's at this point that it almost feels like he's not necessarily trying to set the traps yet. Like, this is sort of like, go away and don't come back. Yeah, this is just a warning. Right. He's trying to scare them away. This is a warning, and they do not listen because they're idiots. I also realized just now, in my recapping, I think I forgot to put what he does with the pizza boy. Oh, yeah. Well... To be fair, he didn't actually physically touch that pizza boy in any way. It was a psychological scary. That's true. He just scared the pizza well, boy. Well, it's just more like those are like firecrackers he puts in there. Like that could kill someone. It could have gone wrong, but it would have been unintentional. It would have been inside the house. It would have hurt him more than it would have hurt the pizza boy. Yeah. That's a fair point for those of you listening at home. We just were talking about the trap where... The pizza kid comes to his house, delivers his pizza. He plays the, keep the change, you filthy animal. And uh, instead of answering the door, he like shoves money through the mail slot and then does a firecracker situation inside the door in a pot to make it sound like he's firing a gun at the boy to make him run away. 
Mm -hmm. That boy could have slipped on the ice and gotten a very bad, like, he could have broken an arm, whatever he landed Mm -hmm. on. That boy also did then uh, proceed to knock over that little sculpture in the back, and he could have killed his car. The car insurance wouldn't have liked that claim. Or, no, airbags probably weren't in that car. He would be fine, but his wallet would be hurting a little bit because there would be some mild injury or car injury. Right. And he didn't right. even call the police, which is weird, but it is weird. I want to say for this, the thing about this one is that this is our first instance of this boy does not have to do this. <laughs> The pizza boy does not care if your parents are home. He does not. You have the money to pay him and you do pay him the money. So you're not getting a free pizza out of this. You're not like trying to get him to give you pizza without your parents being home because the amount of this is just doing it because he likes it. He gets a taste for it. He just did it for the goddamn thrill of it. All he wants to do is just psychologically scar this poor boy. He just wants to know if he can. He doesn't stop to think if he should. He just wants to know if he could. (laughs) He knows for a fact that it doesn't matter that his parents aren't home, right? Because in the beginning of the movie, someone came and like delivered pizzas. Yes! And they were looking at the kids like, do you have the money? Like he was literally like, I will take money from anyone and leave. That's so true. I forgot wow. all about that. Me too. Wow. Cold-blooded. I am marking this down as a lid, <laughs> but you know what? I think I want to make another category that's just like proof that he becomes Saw. We'll make the category torture for fun. Torture for fun. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. Okay. I would not put the other two tortures in there though, because they were a warning. So I won't mark it down as live. I'll only mark it down as torture for fun. Or should I also mark it down as a live? We should put them in one category only. So okay, torture for fun, it's also assumed that they lived. It's not a murder. That's true. But it was an unnecessary trauma. That is truly sickening because I just, I can't even, I like completely forgot all about that because this boy was literally out here just playing with this poor pizza boy's <laughs> head. Oh my God. All right. So the next one, Harry slips on ice covered steps and lands flat on his back. He could have gotten a spinal cord injury and died for sure. Yes. Or been paralyzed. Definitely the paralysis. Especially if he had hit his head when he landed instead of his back. Like if his head had bopped against the back of the pavement also, he could have died. People die falling downstairs all the time. Falling flat on your back? Absolutely. I would say that's manslaughter though. Yeah, manslaughter. Before you say manslaughter, I do want to remind you he did extra ice those stairs. Oh yeah, you're right. He like went out and actively poured extra water on both his up, like the stairs to get to the, his front door and his downstairs basement steps. Right. Yeah, and he didn't know how he was going to land. The fact that he only landed on his back is incidental. Yeah. Right. But like, it could have been different. Yeah, I'd count that as a murder. He wanted that guy dead. He wanted that guy dead. And so here's the thing. The next three are that because <laughs> Harry then tries again like an idiot yeah. and slips down the steps a second time. Right. And Marv then goes, tries to go down the back stairs and he slips all the way down those. Those stairs would have killed him for sure. Oh, yeah. There were cement stairs. When I was watching it, I was confused where this crowbar came from. I think it's a goof. But like not only does Marv fall down those stairs and like near should have probably died. A crowbar comes out of nowhere and lands on him. And he was like holding one. Maybe it was one. like, or, oh, he was holding one? I thought it was Marv's crowbar. Yes, but I don't know because of the clip, and I'd have to find the clip to show you again. The way that it looked was that he was holding a crowbar as he fell, but then sort of out of nowhere, one just kind of drops into frame on him. And then he has a crowbar again. So I don't know if it's a goof or if he like kind of was implied to throw it. That was probably a goof and they intended to have him like accidentally drop it on the way down and it flung in the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I think happened. So I think the crowbar part is not, is not intentional fault. at all, but I think the stairs were trying to kill him. And the stairs oh, would yeah. be lethal, absolutely. Okay, so these are three kills in a row right here because this boy is not playing. And this, I think those two kills, uh, or those three kills, I'm sorry, doesn't feel like diabolical yet. He's not out here trying to kill yet. No, it feels like he really is just trying to stop them from getting into his house, which is self-defense. Those feel like justified killings, like, stay out of my house, I don't want you in my house, you're dangerous, Mm -hmm. and I'm willing to defend myself. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the deaths, especially down those stairs, it would have been brutal, but fair. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this next one, Marv is hit in the face with an iron that is on. <laughs> and it falls down the laundry chute and leaves an iron-shaped burn on his face. But it does cog him in the head and he falls down. The traumatic brain injuries there, absolutely. Especially since I think this is coming from, it's at least one floor, but I think it came from two floors up. Yes, it was it definitely two floors. Two floors up. Irons are deceptively heavy as well. And this movie was like yeah. a couple decades ago, so it was even heavier. Right. And it was on, which implies that it had water in it to heat it up. Yeah, and was hot. Oh, true. Oh, oh, the water, yeah, definitely added to the weight. Yeah. Right. That's, I didn't, wasn't even thinking about that. Yo, you're right. <laughs> so it's a three-story fall with a heavy iron. That's definitely true. And then the it being on thing, that was just sadism. That was definitely added sadism. There was no function for that. Right, exactly. Except to just hurt him if he didn't die. Just to fu- keep track of this for myself, I'm going to put a kill with a sort of asterisk on it because this he did add sadism there. Yeah. He really did. <laughs> Absolutely. The asterisk means extra brutal. This is it's showing his his sadistic side. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's a kill with an extra spice of sadistic flavor. It's a kill he can enjoy. Um the next one, Harry burns his hand on a doorknob and it leaves a scar that will be seen even in the next movie. And he does put his hand out in the snow but handle was so hot that it did scar the M into his hand, um, even though he only touched it for like a second. Mm-hmm. 100% sadism. It was definitely a severe burn that could have gotten an infection, especially given all the other things he does later in the film. Okay, I would definitely not though say that he was trying to kill him with that. That was no. 100% a power move. Yeah, that was definitely just sadism. Is that just torture for fun? You, He wants him to remember that this was him? That's torture for fun. Torture for fun, but could have killed him because he definitely could have gotten an infection from that, for sure. Maybe. I mean, if if it would have killed him, that would have only been a sort of manslaughter thing. I don't think it was his right. intention. No, yeah, it so wouldn't I'm, have been murder. It's definitely not murder. Still could have killed him, though. Okay, so put it under the, un- uh, the, the, the torture with an asterisk. That means technically there's a chance that if things went poorly, he could have died from that. Mm-hmm. So, okay. like, under the worst conditions, a.k.a. sepsis, he could have died from that. <laughs> I wonder if he f- knew it was going to leave a scar in the shape of an M to remember his last name's McAllister. Yes. That would be amazing. Side note, what kind of fucking, like, fuck you money do you have to get doors <laughs> that are monogrammed? Like, doorknobs that are monogrammed. That's right? so extra. That's so insane. It really is. And I, I, honestly, I love it. It's the money they earn not spending time with their children. Same, yeah. Same. <laughs> Amy out here living a whole not, other life in her I fantasies. Not, I did not even mean to say same. <laughs> oh, that's Amy funny. actually aspires to be the parents from Home Alone. Amy's out here like mood. I wish I could afford a like 10 bedroom house and to like have a thousand family members live in it at once. And then neglect them all. Yes. Well, <laughs> I wish I had the fuck you money to just casually leave my kid behind on a Christmas vacation somewhere. Right. And <laughs> not even worry that hard except for, I guess, my wife. Literally. <laughs> I don't, he, Dad doesn't even try. Dad's still on vacation the whole movie. I don't think they care much at all. Yeah. He's like, well, can we just wait to the later flight? Yeah. He's like, he'll be fine. That You better, like, have bought that kid a PS4. Those certainly didn't exist yet. No shit, Ina. Some kind of Nintendo did. I just meant more like, get him whatever console this kid wants, because shit. Atari probably existed back then, right? Get him an Atari. In the basement, Marv walks up to the tar-covered stairs, which take his shoes and his socks as he tries to go up. That's how sticky this tar is. And then he steps on a nail on the stairs with his bare foot, falls back down the stairs in pain. Yeah, so that is torture for fun. With the asterisk of... It is worth noting that his nail, the nail goes through his whole foot. He, this man steps all the way down on this nail before freaking out and jumping off of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his natural instincts did not kick in. Maybe because his feet were cold. <laughs> That's gotta be because his feet were cold. Because that man... It was slightly numb. Yeah, he kept pressing down. Or because he just got conked on the head real good. True. He had a concussion like hell. True. His response time was delayed. It's torture for fun with the asterisk because that could have easily been infected because it was tar. 
I think more than likely it absolutely was infected. Yeah. Right. The only reason I think it wasn't an issue was they for sure went to the hospital after this and got everything treated like immediately. Absolutely. So they're probably as okay as they can be while also being permanently scarred. Well, I mean, my only thing is, did they? Because what shows up at the end of the movie but uh, cop cars? Yeah, okay, but like technically they the still cops would have taken legally them to need the medical treatment. And they would have just been, like, cuffed to the dead and stuff like that. Yeah. I just thought that they usually also brought ambulances, but I guess maybe they didn't realize how bad off these poor dudes were until I, later. Right. Yeah, yeah, probably. They were, like, arresting them, and they probably got to the station and was like, these dudes are bleeding, and they're right. like, man, and then they took him to the hospital. This right. man's foot is ten times as big because it's <laughs> swelling and infected. Um, I mean, also, though, this is the 90s. Who knows what their protocols were for that before? Like, if they brought ambulances and police cars and stuff. It was a movie also, so they weren't thinking about that. Right. They were not thinking. This next one. Yes. Harry's head is burned by a blowtorch. Oh, my God. His hat melts and the top of his scalp is burned. This is the first instance of this kid is a saw genius. Like, yes. the door opens and it turns on this blowtorch, which is sitting at the top of it. That absolutely had murderous intent. Who has a blowtorch sitting in their house that they have children in this? I guess they weld. <laughs> Maybe he's a welder. Yeah. Can I just tell you something real quick? Yes. Please. In Home Alone 2, they do a similar burn the head stunt. Uh huh. Oh, I have that written down. Mm hmm. It burned Joe Pesci's head for real. <gasps> no! Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, he got, and I quote, serious burns from that stunt. Something had gone wrong. Dear Lord. This stunt is wild. It is. And we are going to get into it when I get there, I think. Yeah. Because I literally, when I was rewatching it, I wrote down how wild that stunt is because it's just the way that they do it. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's we'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. But that's wild that that burned his head. Jesus. Right. Which is just showing you how dangerous this is, lighting someone on fire. So Kevin could have easily killed someone like that. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that was definitely murderous intent right there. Also, can we just say he had no way of knowing which one was going to go into that door. Joe Pesci is a short guy. It happened to get the top oh of his God, head. Yeah. But imagine if it were Marv. Right into the face, the throat, the mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Bat. Melting his eyes. I never even thought about that. I don't know if eyes can melt, but they would have. Eyes can melt. I believe it. So we're going to say that's a kill, yes? Absolutely. Yes. That one was murderous intent. That was like arson. For sure. My pen is dying. This is the bad time for my pen to die. Here we go. Okay. This is a K with the asterisk because he... Because it was brutal. Tried his fucking best to murder them there. That was not just a cute little safety measure. Yeah, that's a sadistic type of thing. People who do fire things literally are doing it because they get a sexual response from it. And I'm not saying that he gets... He's too young for that. He just liked it. It's just coming. It's in his future. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying, like, in his future, he's going to be getting sexual responses from fire. You've been watching too much Criminal Minds. Yes. I have. The next one is Marv slips on ice again after leaving the basement because he's an idiot. This is just regular kill. Yeah, that's just regular kill. Because it's once again the same ice as before. It's the same thing. He did it all as a part of the, the original thing. It's not like he did it again Yeah. while Marv, Marv was doing stuff. So Right. Also, I know that he was already stupid at the beginning of this movie, but like a lot of Marv's decisions have got to be stupider because of his already so many traumatic brain injuries. Oh, True. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So many concussions. This next one, Marv while climbing through a window, steps on glass Christmas ornaments while he is still barefoot and he still has oh. the gaping wound in his foot and presumably the tar on his foot mm -hmm. from the earlier basement stairs. Oh, that tar is still there for sure. Absolutely. That's torture um, for fun. It is torture for Asterix fun. Asterix because the sepsis, the infections. Torture for, and I think that's a an asterisk. Imagine yeah. just like straight up the glass inside of his, like the nail hole in his foot. And also like tar, like will give him chemical burns. So, like the bottom of his feet are basically gone when they remove it in the hospital. I don't think it'll give you chemical burns. Maybe on the inside of a wound. Will tar give you chemical burns? I'm pretty sure it burns you. No, 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 no. Back when tar and feathering would burn you, that's because they would... What um, cement will kill... Like, if you get it on you, it's like third-degree burns. 
I've never heard that. I saw it on a Grey's Anatomy episode. Tar and feathering people, they would boil the tar first, so it was hot. True. I, you're right, you're right. That was where the burn comes from, from that. You're right. I do think that the tar, at least, I actually don't know much about tar. I don't know if tar kind of is like glueish, where you could, in theory, get it in a bottle and spread it on stairs without heating it up first. But it may no. have been a little warm, but there's no way that kid was like boiling tar hot No, enough. you're right. You're no, right. It was definitely just like he spread it out. It, it is viscous, so. All right. Harry walks into plastic wrap, which is covered with a caulking glue and is blasted with feathers blowing from a fan, which makes him look like a chicken. 100% for fun. That was just for fun. That's not even torture for fun. That's just a regular prank for fun. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like it's got to go under the torture for fun category, though. No, yeah, yeah, Torture yeah. slash prank for fun. I'm not saying make a new category for it. Yeah. But I am saying that that's the kind of prank that would fly in the Parent Trap universe for sure. Oh, I mean, I think it did, didn't it? <laughs> it did. It did happen at one point. It yeah. really, it, that genuinely did happen. Yeah. Jeez. Honestly, though, if I had the ability, that is one that I would do. I think you could get away with doing that to a regular person without being thrown in prison or grounded. Well, no, you would get grounded. Yeah. For sure. I do think, though... It is one of those situations where in any other scenario, this prank would not work because no way are you like so determined to get somewhere that like walking into the plastic wrap with the glue on it would not make you sort of turn around and try to wash it off immediately and not continue forward into the feathers. Yeah. The next one we've got at the same time, Harry and Marv both slip on Hot Wheels looking cars um, that are at the bottom of the stairs and they fall on their backs. Once again, same thing as the stairs. They could have died. Yeah, that's kill. That's like like slipping on the ice. My only thing with that, it was a hard fall and that's on purpose that it's a hard fall. But my only thing with that is it does seem similar in vain to like when you step on a Lego. No, you're actually, you're right. There is a major difference between the ice and this. Mm -hmm. And that is the surface they're landing on. Yeah, it was a wood it's floor. It's just like a floor, like a wood floor. And they weren't upstairs. It was just at the bottom of the stairs. It wasn't, it was not going downstairs. No. Yeah, no, no, no. That was just, um, I would call like, that one manslaughter because the, uh, the right. wrong fall, especially after previous head injuries, could maybe kill you, but it probably wouldn't. No, you're right. He probably wasn't thinking murder with that one Yeah. Okay. I'm going to mark that down as just one, even though technically it happened to both of them. Yeah. Because it was one trap. Yeah. Okay. With a K. Or sorry, not a K. What am I doing? With M, an M. 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 Yeah. I am not used to the M's yet because we haven't had many of them. Right. You haven't had one burned into your hand yet, see? Oh, that's it. You're right. <laughs> You'll never forget after you've been in, <laughs> in Harry's position. You'll never forget. He's an old man and he stares down at the scar on his hand that sometimes looks like a W. All right, the next one. Marv is hit in the face with a paint can and he falls down the stairs, once again landing on top of those Hot Wheels cars. Now that's a Absolutely kill. Absolutely That's murder. a kill. Yeah. Absolutely a kill, yes. Especially because that was like, that paint can, it was full. It was coming from a high place. It goes like right in his face and nose. And if you hit the nose bone hard enough... That's a kill. Mm -hmm. This is just a regular kill, not a specifically murderous one, right? That's a straight clean kill, I would say, because yeah. that still feels like a warning. Like, yeah, you didn't heed my warning before. You came in the house, so I'm going to defend myself. Right. It this. feels like a self-defense kind of kill instead of like an intense kind of kill. Yeah. yeah. He just happened to have a pain can. He didn't go and try to make an elaborate trap out of it. Right. It was easily dodgeable. Like, Joe Pesci is out here dodging the paint can, and Marv is, mm -hmm. once again, his reaction Marv has time... already sustained a head injury. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the, the amount of times Marv hits his head in this movie, like, on its own, is a kill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things, just to sort of say it, there are videos out there that we've seen. It'll, like, add up the wounds as they go, and then count as a kill when they think they've hit the threshold of kill. We're just taking each thing out of context. Yeah. But just keeping in mind that the reason he's so dumb is because he has sustained those injuries but they're not playing into right in this scenario if he would die or not right this next one harry is hit in the face with a paint can which knocks out his gold tooth um and then he also falls to the bottom of the stairs on top of marv okay well i think it's still murder yeah i think it's still a kill because it still could have killed him mm -hmm. but it really feels like kind of almost part of the same thing i know he deliberately was throwing the paint cans as he went though 
Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to count it as all one, but it, it, it's the same right. thought process behind it. Yeah. So you're, we're saying kill again. Yeah, just yeah. straight up kill. The one thing I do want to say, and I don't know if we should mark it separate or not, but he obviously could not have planned for the fact that Harry would land on top of Marv at the bottom of the stairs. But I do think that that falling on Marv might have been like a a manslaughter situation where he might have accidentally killed Marv again. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Were Marv not already dead there. Yeah. That's true. He would have pancaked him. But it also would have made it a a little bit. (laughs) It would have made it a little (laughs) less likely for uh, Harry to die, though, because he would have gotten a little bit more cushioned from falling on flesh versus hard floor. That's a true point. Though I do agree with what you guys said with um, Marv two seconds ago, where I think it's more the paint can that would kill him rather than the fall. Right, right, right. So the next one, Marv. Oh. This one is ridiculous. Marv gets a tarantula put onto his face while he's trying to grab Kevin's foot. And before we get into what this means, I was reading the wiki, and the wiki says that this tarantula's name is Axel. Did you know that this tarantula had a name? Because I actually respected this tarantula more once I learned that his name was Axel. That's kind of a dope-ass name for a spider. It makes sense he has a name. He is a pet. I don't think they ever mentioned his name, but I like it. Right? I'm like, damn, okay, wait, respect points to Buzz for finding a kick-ass name for his creepy-ass pet. (laughs) Anyway, um, that's obviously just torture for fun. Yeah, and but it's also funny to me. It was also used for distraction, though. Well, he's out here keeping this tarantula on him just in case, you know? That's like, true. This boy, why does this boy have this contingency plan tarantula on him? True. Like- <laughs> that's true. Well, no, but the he wasn't carrying it. It just it got into the attic. No, he picked it up later. He saw it scurrying around and picked it up. Because it was after he broke the bookshelf and then it just kind of got away and it just happened to be there. It was as a distraction. I forgot that. So maybe it's just a no-kill category. What was the no-kill category again? Live, you mean? Live. This yeah. is a live. Do we, do it's we think a live. it's a I wrote it down as torture for fun. Should I erase that? And it's just a live. Yeah, it's a live because it was a distraction. I forgot that could happen. I know, right? <laughs> this kid is so diabolical. I forgot that sometimes he just does things that you might live from. <laughs> I forgot that sometimes he was trying to defend himself because the burglars did get close to killing him. Right? And this wasn't a Kevin-caused thing because he couldn't have known that this would happen, but Marv definitely would have gotten killed by Harry with that crowbar smashing the... Oh, yeah, but that was just Marv being an idiot smashing Harry yeah. like that. Right, right, right. There right. was no reason to do that. That's actually on here in a couple of seconds. Okay. And we'll I did star then. it because it technically has nothing to do with Kevin, but that's why I kind of thought that a manslaughter category was needed. There are some where it's like, this man died in your house because you were doing crazy shit, but I don't think you wanted this to happen here, sort of a thing. Yeah. So is that the next one then? No, the next one is Harry is knocked unconscious after tripping on a tripwire. Oh, yeah. That's why the tarantula crawls on him, because he ends up getting knocked unconscious on this tripwire. Right. And as he's coming to, Marv sees the tarantula on him and starts smacking with a crowbar. Okay, I'm going to put that one down as manslaughter because he did hit his head hard enough to get knocked out. Yeah, that's true. But I don't think Kevin meant to kill him Mm -hmm. at that time. No, I think that that's just gone wrong for sure. That was also just probably to slow him down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I do agree. Like, he just got knocked unconscious there. Honestly, anytime somebody goes out for any length of time, you could die. Yes. No, that's so true. And the movies always pretend like that's not true. Like, just movies in general. But if you go unconscious, you could die. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, you may not come back. He could have been in a coma forever. Right. So this next one uh, is not technically planned, but Marv hits Harry with the crowbar because Axel the tarantula is crawling on him while he's unconscious and he is trying to kill it. Yeah, so I'm going to call that a manslaughter only because they only were in that situation because Kevin had been trapping them, right? And also, I think Marv only was that stupid because of the seven concussions he's already sustained. That is... Very true. I mean, that and plus, I think in everybody, 
you get a visceral I must kill this thing reaction to any spider you see ever. So like, <laughs> I'm just surprised he didn't run to Harry's blowtorch earlier and try to, you know, burn him, burn the spider. Cause I would just burn the house down if I saw a tarantula. Yeah. Especially since they're not like in Australia where they might be more normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually don't know where they're, they live. They're not in California where that might also happen. Yeah, they have snow of some kind. <laughs> um, yeah. While trying to cross a rope to the treehouse from the house, Kevin cuts the rope with hedge clippers. Marv and Harry do not let go, and they instead swing into the exterior house wall, which is brick, <laughs> which then causes them to let go of the rope and fall onto the snowy outside ground on their backs. Yeah, no, that was awkward. I think it's a live, actually. I think it's a live also. Hear me out. Two stories, even if they had fallen straight down, is unlikely to kill you when you're landing on snow. I guess that's true. Well, I will say too, it stops their momentum when they hit the brick and that would hurt, but it wouldn't kill them. And then they fall onto padded ground because that snow, while it is a little bit on the crunchy side, it does sort of cushion them probably enough to not kill them. Injure, yes. Whereas when they were on the steps and stuff, they were um, falling onto the sidewalk. Icy concrete. Okay, I guess you're right. So I think that is actually a live. And while I think he wanted to kill them in that, I don't think there was ever a chance it was going to happen. Yeah, you know what's funny is while watching it, it feels like, oh, this is the scare. Like, this is the closest they've come to death. Like, yeah dropping that far they're gonna die but it's actually if you think about it one of the less likely to do that to them right mm -hmm. we talked earlier about the videos that they have about home alone and how in some of those videos they have like doctors doing things the part that made me the most mad about those videos were this next thing i'm about to read they said would kill both of them and i know it's because it's cumulative or whatever but i just get really mad about it mm -hmm. So Marv is hit in the back of the head by old man Marley's snow shovel. And so here's the thing. Kevin is hanging on a door at this point. They've caught Kevin. They're hanging him on a door. And his friend, old man Marley, that we thought was scary, has come in to save him. He hits Marv on the back of the head with a shovel. I don't think that Kevin could have planned for that. But at the same time, I do think he'd sowed enough seeds to sort of think that he could manipulate old man Marley into helping him in this moment. I wouldn't even call it manipulation. I mean, he did it of his own accord. Yeah, no, that man's just trying to save this child's life. I think it's a manslaughter situation. Kevin's not even directly responsible for that. I don't think it would kill them at all. Like getting hit in the head with a shovel? I mean, movie magic, it wouldn't. I think it could. It blunt force trauma and it's metal. But they're n he's not like whacking them that hard. He's not that far from them but we just did mention anytime you're knocked unconscious you could die i just don't i feel like that's the sort of thing that if someone came in hit me on the head with a shovel i don't think i would go unconscious i think it conveniently knocked them unconscious but i don't think that in real life it would actually do much other than give them a bump on the head and they'd probably be like oh shit this kid does have a grown-up we gotta go i think that is more brain trauma i think it could could kill them I'm not saying it would, but I think it could. It was a metal shovel. I just feel like he would need more force than it looked like this man used to kill them with this shovel. Maybe I need to watch it again. Let's look it up. I don't know. Check out the wind-up. I gotta... I guess he did do more wind-up than I was remembering. He was close, but he, he did really do a lot of wind-up. The second one. Okay, you know what? Marv getting hit on the head, I think, had a lot of wind-up. But that one to Joe Pesci, I don't know. But it hit him right in the forehead where like your important brain bits no actually all your brain bits are important <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> i mean the thing is joe pesci then fell onto objects and hit the back of his head as he fell oh you know that's Did a he? good catch because i didn't really notice that but you're right <gasps> he totally slams his head against that oven that's a double web oh no it's something behind it's like a kitchen oh chair. it's a chair it's a chair next but to the still, oven he he both hits the back of his head and then falls through a chair. Yeah. Or like he, he gets hit in the front of the head, then falls through the... Hits the back. Okay, okay. Yeah, I would call that manslaughter. I think both are manslaughter. So that brings us to the end of Home Alone 1. Do we want to see where we're at now? Yeah, well, yeah. tell us our totals. Our totals right now, we have six kills, four lives, five manslaughters, two tortures for fun, two extra diabolical kills, and three torture for funds that would probably have killed them. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. That's, I didn't feel like it had gotten that bad from doing that, but no, 
That's those crazy. Those are crazy totals, right? <laughs> Another thing that I didn't do in Home Alone 2 and I wanted to, but I didn't quite have time. I didn't include anything that he does to the hotel staff. He does some crazy things to those hotel staff. <laughs> he really does. Yeah, I mostly didn't because that video that we watched only had Harry Marv. Yeah. The wiki that I was looking at for some reason also only did Harry and Marv. Okay. I did want to include that. So I think that I'm going to try to... On reflection, now that I do think about it, it was all mostly psychological torture of that hotel staff. I don't think he really did anything to hurt anybody. That's true. But we do have a torture for fun category now. So I feel like maybe we should. We'll see what we have time for. Yes. All right, guys. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, or as I like to call yes. it, Home Alone 2, Eerily Clean New York City. <laughs> because if you watch this fucking movie, there's no goddamn garbage anywhere except for the alley scene. But guess what? New York City does not have alleys. So <laughs> that's why the city's so stinky, because... <laughs> <laughs> the only alleyways that exist are like between buildings that you can only get to from like one spot and they're gated up. Mm -hmm. But 98% of the garbage is put just on the sidewalks because they wanted to fit more room for people. Movies really do over rely on the alley trope for New York City. And I've been to New York City. And I've never seen one. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> At least not on Manhattan. Definitely not in Manhattan. This movie has to take place in like Brooklyn or something for most of it. But the problem is he kind of walks mm -hmm. to this abandoned condemned house or whatever from Manhattan toy stores way too easily. <laughs> like this kid would not have done this multiple times. But uh -huh. we suspend our disbelief. Yes. So let us first talk about how Harry and Marv slip on pearls that are dropped by Kevin and they do land on their backs on a New York City sidewalk. That is too clean, in my opinion. Mm, yes. I'd call that a kill. I mean, that's the same thing as the ice, you know? It's a kill. Well, it's not quite the same as the ice because it's no stairs. There is no ice on the sidewalk. But the pearls are functioning as ice. My question, though, is do we count it the same as we counted those cars? cars. Oh. Because it's not quite as intense a fall. Like, the stairs had, like, yeah. height involved and possible landing on, like, necks and heads. And this is mostly, like, backs and butts. Like, they're going to bruise their pelvises. Right. I don't true. know. You're right. This is a live. This is a live. Okay. I don't think it's torture for fun because I think, once again, it's a warning. Like, he was, keep right. the he half was away from me. Don't away. even try it again. Like, this will happen again, I promise. Yeah. He didn't t have time to think about something torturous. Well, here's the thing. He tries to do it to get away from them. To be fair, this kid thinks on the fly for this. Like, damn. He's a genius. He really is. It's scary. It is. But then they do catch up to him. And mm -hmm. Marv and Harry are walking with him, trying to pass him off as his son. And then they start walking behind a hot model. And, uh... Kevin pinches her butt cheek. This little psychopath pinches this girl's butt cheek. Yeah. And he just so happened to pinch the butt cheek of the strongest model in New York City because he pinches her butt cheek. She <laughs> immediately turns around, sees Marv, and punches him directly in the face, which does call, cause him to fall on his back. Obsessed. She has punched this man so hard in his face that he falls on his back. An icon. I'm saying... That one seems like a manslaughter because she, with the, that kind of force behind her punch, she could have punched him in the nose and punched his nose right into his brain. But it would have been so deserved, like at least in her mind. That one's also a manslaughter situation because he did fully start that shit. He did. Yes. He did. That was all Kevin. Yes. But so smart. The thing after that is she punches Marv in the face. But then Kevin says, no, it wasn't him. It was him and points to Harry. And then she punches Harry in the face and he yeah. falls on his back. Two manslaughters. It's two manslaughters right there. Because that, that was two distinct punches that he invoked. And I will say, like, I cannot mm -hmm. understate because they wanted the sort of slapstick element of, like, the boys falling on their back. They inadvertently made her the strongest model in New York City. Like, she may have superhuman abilities, this woman. She's amazing, an icon. We love her. In this universe, I would not be surprised if Harry and Marv are also superheroes like not not heroes but like have heightened abilities in invulnerability it's just like a damn because they're they're not literally indestructible by any means but they certainly are far more resistant and resilient yeah. to injuries than an actual person would be that's so true but it's also just like damn they have these powers and they use them for what petty theft 
Not even like high scale theft. They're the wet bandits. The sticky bandits, both of them. Terrible. All right, the next one. <laughs> Harry is launched from a seesaw that is triggered by Marv and set up by Kevin, and he lands back first onto a parked car. And that parked car <laughs> is uh, absolutely totaled because the roof is crushed <laughs> in entirely. Like, Ma <laughs> somehow Harry's body weight, he becomes a human bowling bar ball, and like, just the top of his car, gone. It's crumbled How beneath him. How much does he weigh? Right? He, the, the seesaw, like... The science does not work on this. The seesaw, Marv jumping onto it, would not launch this man enough How for him to <laughs> crush this entire car unless they have superhuman ability. But How far in the air did he, he fly? He flies! This man soars! <laughs> Wind beneath my wings! That's where Bette Midler came up with the song because Jesus, goddamn fuck, this man <laughs> takes flight! <laughs> he becomes a bird and sails for the stars! I'm gonna send you. The, I'm gonna send it to you because this man he goes flying. That is incredible. I'm gonna call that a kill. Yeah, just clean cut. No, he he's absolutely dead. Demolished. Part of me wonders. And I'm going to call it a kill anyway, but I do just want, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't say there's no way he could have known it was going to work that good. Like, I don't think that he set that up <laughs> thinking I'm about to kill this man right now, but I think that in his heart, that's what he wanted. And he was just like, hoped, wow, yeah. I didn't think that this was possible, but I'm glad that it was possible. Yeah. I think maybe he hoped that if things went just as bad as they always do for those two, it would be a kill. Um, so it's going to be at 211. Okay, one second. It's only at 2.11? Yeah, the fucking second one is brutal compared to the first one. Oh my god. The entire, like, last three minutes of this video. <laughs> wow. Do you see him go flying like that? <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Oh my god. god. have been dead four times over from that. Yeah, that's, that's a kill. We're gonna count that as a kill, because that's just fucking yes. straight up murder of this man, even if he didn't technically think it would go that well. So the next one... Marv is hit in the head by bricks thrown from a three or four story roof. Uh, it's hard for me to tell. Um, leaving large red marks on his face. This happens four times in a row. In a row? I remember that. He's murdered. Harry dodges them every single time. And to be fair, once Marv was on the ground, he was not dodging any more of them. Maybe the second one he could have dodged, but the third and fourth, he's like already, his head is so fucking screwed up that there's no way he was going to have the reaction time to dodge the last two. But the fuck, four in a row hit him straight in okay. the forehead. This man has aim. I'm going to call that four separate kills because... He definitely, even if he thought there was a chance that they might dodge them, was throwing each brick hoping it would kill them. You know what I think? I like what you're thinking, but I want to go one step further and say it's one kill and three torture for funds with an asterisk. Because this man killed him on the first one, and then he just kept throwing because he liked it. Yeah, no, that's so true. That's true. true because true, the, true. the torture for fun with an asterisk implies that also would yeah, be it, death, but yes. was extra brutal. So yes, I agree with that. Because he truly was out here. He could have stopped anytime he wanted. He but, had his cake, but he ate it too. He just kept going. Oh my God. He was like, you're not dead enough. This is what we call, ladies and gentlemen, overkill. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this next one is the wild time. Okay. This is the wild time. <laughs> well, here's why. In a direct reference to Saw 2... Marv is shot by a gun while trying to open a door. The only difference is Home Alone's is a staple gun and it shoots Marv multiple times, first in the ass, then in the dick, then in the nose. Saw 2's is an actual gun that shoots someone in the eye. And then I had to look up dates and realized Home Alone was in fucking 19 goddamn 99 or some shit. And Saw 2 was in like 2006 or 7, which means that Saw 2 pulled from Home Alone for this shit. <laughs> Saw 2 watched Home Alone and said, you know what? He, this kid's got something there, which is my most concrete evidence that Kevin McAllister just upgrades this trap for when he's a serial killer later in life and he does become Definitely. John Kramer. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I, that's just torture for fun. There was no way that was going to kill them at all. There was Not no yet. way that was going to stop them at all. <laughs> 
he hadn't perfected the art of killing them with that method yet, but... Yeah, not with a right, staple right. gun. There was no way it was going to kill them. There was no way it was going to stop them. He was just hurting them in a hilarious manner. I will say the only one that had a chance of really fucking people up was the nose one. Because it goes ass and then dick and then nose, um, which sucks. And the dick would definitely have like lasting penile damage once again. But the nose could have gone in an eye and that would have sucked. And maybe killed depending. But I don't think it could have gone that deep, right? But but they actually, they're, they're not just any staples. They're it's like a staple gun. builder staples. They're huge. That's true. They're very large. Because you got to remember, he's in like a condemned building that's like was abandoned mid reno or something. So there's he's got access right. to nothing but like construction grade equipment. So he this is a construction okay. grade staple gun that's got the power. Luckily, it was Marv, and it did it. He's and got it, a big schnoz, got right in the way. Exactly. I'm just going to call it 1T4F for that whole yeah. thing. But that is our big star, the reason that he becomes the man we know later. Yes. <laughs> so Harry, he leaps to a fire escape ladder one story off of the ground, grabs a rung greased with monster sap soap, and falls to the ground on his back in a gross alleyway, which does not actually exist in New York City. But suspending disbelief... He leaps to a fire escape. It is one story off the ground and then immediately falls onto his back. One story. Concrete ground. I think that he's probably dead. I think you're right. A million percent. (laughs) He's probably, in a real life scenario, there's a really good chance his neck goes first. Oh, yeah. Right. By design, he's dead. Yeah, with the... The momentum right. of all that. That's a, that's a kill. That's straight up brutal kill. And it's funny, at this point, we already sort of have more kills than we had at this point with the last movie. So he's just upgrading to kill now. He's he's not fucking around anymore. He's had a whole year to think about more ways to kill he, people. He does. It feels like less of these so far are for fun. Yeah. And he's just like, let's just end this. Like, I, I'll go play with someone else. Yeah. Hint, hint, Saw movies. Right. The next one, Marv opens the front door and falls through a hole into the second basement of a building. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I watched this scene three times to make sure that he is in fact falling, (laughs) not past just the first thing into a basement. He passes one other floor before hitting the floor he lands on. (laughs) There's like two stories to concrete. Two stories to concrete. Face first. Yes. The world's most painful belly flop. Yes, absolutely. Like that, that feels dead to me. And to be fair, I mean, oh, yeah. This is probably the one thing that Kevin didn't have to set it up, but man, did he get excited when he saw that he could utilize it, you know? He definitely did. Yeah, that's, that's a kill for sure. And a rough one. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing that I noticed once they get into this house. Almost every single thing that happens to Marv kills him. This man, <laughs> this man gets the rough end of this stick. He really does. It, he's getting fucked with a cactus in this movie. Like metaphorically, but like I wouldn't be surprised. If there were, if there had been a third one. That You're right. would have gotten to that point. They were about, what else do we do to Marv? Well, his ass hasn't had a cactus in it yet, so <laughs> might as well. <laughs> Horrible, but true. <laughs> what hasn't happened to Marv? All right, so the next one. Harry enters a door and a bag of tools opens on his head. He falls on his back in a doorway. And I will say that I did take a good look at it. There are a metric ass ton of metal <laughs> tools inside. <laughs> there really are. <laughs> but nothing is like particularly pointy. It's mostly like wrenches. But Oh, but wrenches are very heavy. Yes, I just wanted to clarify that definitely the heavy, yes, but the, it wasn't a stabbing situation. Yes. Okay. I do think that it could have killed him. I think it was designed to kill him, but <laughs> I think at this point, <laughs> Kevin knows how indestructible they are. So he probably knew it wouldn't, but hoped it would. Do you think this is a torture for fun with an asterisk or do you think it's a kill? I think it's a, I think it's a kill. I think he just meant to yeah, kill him right no, there. I agree. I, I agree. Okay. He meant to kill him and yet knew he would not. Yes, that's that's the where it starts getting meta, especially in the second one. He knows and find out that it's not gonna work, but he's like, so all of the kills have a bit of an asterisk where he's like, this probably won't actually do it, but it should. Right. My question with this one is, how many traps did we not see? How many did he set up thinking this would go on longer than it did? Because he knows how indestructible these guys are, <sighs> right? This next one is Marv slips on monster sap soap, slides across the floor, feet first. Wait, pause. What? I'm so sorry to pause you, but 
what if after all this happened, especially in the first movie, he had set up more traps and forgot to take them all down and <laughs> accidentally killed one of his non-indestructible relatives in his house? Oh, no. That would be so horrible. That's hilarious. I mean, is Grandpa in the second one? No. Actually, I think he is, unfortunately. Who's Grandpa? There was like an old man. He was, there was an uncle. old man. Uh, uncle, it might have been yeah. uncle. But I think he is in the second one. Yeah, no, honestly, probably have. I mean, whether or not it happened in the house, it definitely happened in the second one with this abandoned. Yeah, like whatever construction workers came back. Like some poor construction worker several weeks later came in, was like, what is going on here? And all of a sudden, like, just dies. Like, Absolutely. It's very easy if you don't have the conditions, conditions just right mm-hmm. for a construction accident to be fatal. Oh, so. yeah. And then when, when the house is rigged to murder people. <laughs> oh, boy. Just wait on what you just said there. So, okay. So Marv slips a monster sap soap. And in the least believable trap of all time, <laughs> he goes from <laughs> slipping to, like, he does not have the momentum for this. But somehow he tobogans his body <laughs> under a, uh, a like, a bookshelf thing. But it's filled <laughs> with paint cans that are full and the bookshelf <laughs> falls towards him on top of him which crushes him and it covers him with paint pancakes him again <laughs> it is worth noting <laughs> in the video that has the death count in it by this one weird doctor they do mention mm. something for this trap about penile something and i watched it and i did not feel like his legs went you know around side one of the legs of the bookshelf like i didn't think he hurt his dick all that bad plus he didn't react like he hurt his dick but if that's an added layer we want to go with i'm fine with uh submitting that for some reason they seem to think that he hurt his dick there but i didn't see that i just want to add it because that's funny him hurt him that is funny he hurt his dick it is funny he already stapled it it was somebody else's assessment that it happened so why not say it did why not head cannons we're gonna count it he stapled that dick and then he and then he <laughs> had a shell fall on it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm still not over <laughs> that you called it tobogganing <laughs> his body. I don't know how else to call If you look at that video that I said and you I scroll did, ahead, watched. it's what happens. <laughs> he goes from standing vertically to suddenly he is laying on his back in like fucking bobsled, like human bobsled position. Just <laughs> shooting like a bullet. Like a Mario Kart, you turn into a bullet bullet straight at his bookshelf, and then it falls on his face. I just feel like this is a manslaughter. Yeah. Because it is. I yeah. do think that he wanted him. There's no way he intended for that to no. happen because it shouldn't have happened. But did this man die? He died so much. Like, <laughs> that, like what? So he much. wanted him to slip on soap. He didn't want him to suddenly like human bullet his way across the room and then dump paint on himself and then he get crushed. He into the bullet from Mario Kart and just rocketed it towards the Oh my God, this man. So that's a manslaughter, M. He said, got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> The fucking audio on that is gonna be terrible, but shit, that's funny. Oh my god. I'm gonna pee myself. Oh my god. Um, so then the, the next one, and this one is just kind of, this one is wild, because my memory of this one, and when I watched it again, the real, really what happens in this one is psychotic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so he, I think I already know what you're about to say. You know it, but I can, let me say it and let me explain and then talk about it. I gotta stop out of this. Oh my god. Okay. I, mean, I was so obsessed with this as a kid. Me too. I th- it left rent free in my head so much. Okay. Especially because his, his goddamn. Like scream. the foley <laughs> scream on this one is is truly haunting. Um, okay, okay, okay. So, um, ah, okay. I'm like legitimately crying. It's so funny. Me too. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> so, Marv 
after he gets paint dumped on him and he crawls out from under that bookshelf, <laughs> he's he does the rational thing anyone would do. And he says, how do I wash this paint off myself? So he walks over to a sink, like a slop sink in this room, and he goes to turn it on. But Kevin, for some reason, anticipated him wanting to use the sink at some point and rigged it to electrocute him when he touched both knobs. Well, I guess they were at one point calling themselves wet bandits, so maybe it's not that far-fetched for him to have done this, but... That's true. He went to go turn on the water, and when he touched it, he electrocuted himself. And so it says, Marv is electrocuted by an arc welder while trying to wash paint off his body. You fully see Marv turn into a skeleton as he screams <laughs> at this part. And I just need to clarify, you do not just see a skeleton through his skin kind of skeleton trope. No, you see a skeleton. They take a skeleton. They put him in the clothes and a wig. He turns into a full skeleton for about three seconds while screaming <laughs> and then turns yep. back into Marv. That's his his superhuman powers at work, keeping him alive after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He electrocuted him so much, he lost all skin and muscle. <laughs> and organs. <laughs> and They're all gone. Everything's gone. It's all gone. Oh, my God. <laughs> I really thought that it was just like an overlay, like they do in a lot of movies. No, they just took a fucking skeleton from science class and put it in his clothes for 10 <laughs> seconds. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, they Marissa, really what are you saying? That. And the sound of his scream, <gasps> the most iconic. Can I... <laughs> let me find the scream, because it's not copyright. If I just play one second of this for you all. Here we go. I found it. Oh my god. So Why was he screaming for so long? Well, watching that back, it brought back something that I fucking forgot about to write down. What? While he was being electrocuted, Kevin was on the other side playing with the levels. <laughs> so he, when he turned into a skeleton, Kevin cranked that shit up to a 10. <laughs> and then he turned <laughs> skeleton, and then Kevin turns it back down. He turns it down again, and then turns it off when he decides he's done and runs away. Kevin was controlling that shit the whole time. Oh my god. That was torture for fun asterisks because that was obviously a brutal murder, but for fun, completely for fun. The amount of enjoyment in that one is diabolical. Like, <laughs> I'm a little sick to my stomach with just how much he enjoyed that shit. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So the next one. This is, here we go, Mercy. This is your one. Harry lights his hat on fire again with a blowtorch because yes. he tried to turn on a light in this bathroom in this condemned house. He then tries to put it out in a sink that has no water, so he turns to the toilet, the next logical place with water, and he does a handstand and slowly lowers his head into the toilet. But let me just say, the reason this is the wildest stunt in this fucking movie is because Harry has perfect form. <laughs> he goes, he puts himself up in the perfect, like, handstand over a toilet. His legs pin straight up. Like, this man is a gymnast. And then oh, he slowly right. lowers himself into this toilet. These people are superhuman. He has to be superhuman. Perfect form. But the toilet's filled with kerosene, not water. And so then the fire that is on his head does cause an explosion in this bathroom. And the other part of this that makes it the craziest thing in the entire movie is because... The house miraculously does not catch on fire or explode after that. True. That's insane. And it's winter. Things are dry. Yes. The only logical explanation is Kevin planned for that and must have dampened all of the nearby wood to ensure that yeah. he did not kill everyone inside of this bit. Like, he must have planned ahead to ensure there's no death here, except for perhaps, and hopefully, Harry. Right. I think, again, we have to put that in the torture for fun asterisk because i think again he was intending to kill because that that kerosene is like a bomb on him mm -hmm. but the fact that he purposely made sure the sink wouldn't work and then made sure that the it would ignite even further mm -hmm. that's just messing with him 
that's just playing with him. Also, if like an explosion reaction happens while your head is still in the bowl, isn't that fire going to shoot straight up your like nose and mouth? Yes. Mm -hmm. And like scorch your innards? He literally after that has like head to toe blackened char on his body. His Mm -hmm. teeth, he was a flambe. He was a human flambe. And (laughs) the reason that I wholeheartedly agree with your uh, torture for fun with an asterisk is because this man, remember, this man, Kevin McAllister, remembered that one horrible trick he did to him in the first one. And he was like, let's do a callback, shall we? (laughs) <laughs> and when he was like, but let's dial it up to a 10 this time. He, he, he. Like, what? This is diabolical. Literally. Absolutely. All right, guys. Marv pulls a rope, which starts a chain reaction of a hundred pound bag of dry cement hitting him on the face. <gasps> oh, yeah. Death. Here's the problem, though. He could have dodged this at any time. This Not with the traumatic brain injury. This bag of cement was at the topmost floor. He looks all the way up. He sees the thing falling for a second, and he has plenty of time. He has probably five to seven seconds of just waiting. And um, instead of doing that, he stands there, says, uh-oh, and uh, looks up. And this, for me, feels like a classic Saw moment where... He has to choose his fate, and he chooses to die. He did choose his fate. (laughs) But also, Kevin knew what he would choose, because Kevin had just actively cooked his brain with electricity. (laughs) He rigged it in his favor for the kill on that one. For this reason, I advocate we put it on torture for fun with an asterisk, because I think he did intend to kill and knew it would kill if it went his way. But in the end, he was torturing this man with a, a saw trap. It was just torture because he could have easily not died. He could have. In he could have easily stepped to the side. One second could have just stepped to the side. He, he had. But Kevin knew that he wouldn't. Yes. And that was the torture. Mm-hmm. And this is, like we said, a the beginnings of his saw career. We see where the seeds are planted. Yeah. For his later saw escapades. Harry, halfway up a ladder, falls on it because it's been tampered with. Sawed, yeah. And his face goes to the floor. That's just a live. Yeah. You would live. That would be unpleasant, but you, you'd be fine. You'd probably break your face and your fingers. Fingers, yeah. Maybe your dick if you were hard for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> he loved the fire incident. <laughs> he got off on it. He stubbed his dick so hard. Jesus Christ, that's only our second live of this movie. <laughs> oh my God. This next one, Marv and Harry both dodge paint cans on the stairs because they're smarter now. Mm-hmm. Only to be hit in the face with a massive metal pipe. <laughs> okay. Which spans the entire length, like width of the stairs. There's no dodging this unless you like crouch. And they were just swinging their heads to the side. Oh, right, right, right. But no, that's just. But part of this, doesn't that also kick them into a hole? Oh, yes, yes I forgot. Sorry. Yes. Oh. And then it falls on them. For some reason, I mar- made that a second one. But yes, after being hit with the metal pipe, they fall backwards into a hole in front of the door that's at the bottom of the stairs. So it's two stories down again onto their backs. And I think that's where I should stop this one and make the next one because the next one is he cuts the lead pipe after they've fallen. Okay. Have a couple seconds to sit there. He then cuts the pipe, and then it goes down on them. But Okay. So, uh, oh, it goes down on it them. It does. How nice of it. No, absolutely. The first one was murder, and the second one was murder for fun. Yes. Like, it was just torture. Sadistic. Absolutely. First one, murder. Second one, torture for fun. Okay. Torture for fun with an asterisk, right? Right, yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. The asterisk, because lethal torture for fun. You're right. <laughs> This one is perhaps the strangest one. (laughs) Both men are... She says after some of the strangest (laughs) shit I've ever heard. After the skeleton thing. (laughs) I just... When I explain this to you, and perhaps when you watch it back, you'll, I think, agree with me. Mm -hmm. They are crushed by a massive metal tool trest that falls down a staircase... Oh, they don't leave. ...into a door and then tears the door off its hinges and sandwiches them between the door and the wall. Oh, yeah, it defies all physics, like a lot of this film. And afterwards, they uncrack their noses, which implies that they did just break and or dislocate their noses in this attempt. Yes. And have to reset them. The reason that this is so weird is because it comes down the stairs and then... 
somehow, some way, when it gets to the bottom and crashes through the door, instead of just like crushing them like I think it would normally, it's sort of as if they are standing on a sudden random forklift, just pushes them straight back into the wall. They almost glide because of this tool chest. Yeah, That's so true. It's the weirdest like decision making ever, but also. I think I remember the vividly mm-hmm. the way this toolbox falls down the stairs. It's almost like it's walking down the yes, stairs. Like yes, it, yes, it is upright. One after the other, like just kind of like walking down, doesn't have like a glidey sense to it. Absolutely. And the thing is though, that thing is like a thousand pounds. There's yes. no way they would have lived. No, that's that's absolutely a kill. Like they shouldn't have been able to get out from that pin. Yeah, I agree. That's a kill. Marv and Harry are climbing up rope that is soaked in kerosene (laughs) when it is ignited. They fall three stories off of it, hit scaffolding on the way down, (gasps) which breaks under their weight, and then Harry lands on his back on the ground because he was lower down, and then Marv lands on top of him, but two inches away from kissing him. They almost have a homoerotic moment. It's very cute. (laughs) A good time for it, I'd say. They need a bit of comfort. Diabolical or not, Kevin is also a matchmaker, okay? (laughs) Yes. He's bringing these men together. This may just be torture for fun with an asterisk. Yes. I think that he just wanted to torture them, and it's sort of, the asterisk is more of a manslaughter, but like... Yeah. I mean, he could have just cut the rope, but he didn't. He lit it on fire. He he was like, let's take this to the max. He was like, what's more hilarious than them falling? Scaring them to death to make them let go. Literally. So this one... I don't understand it really, okay. but it happens somehow. All right. And maybe you guys remember better than me, but while the two lie there, the one they have time for Marv to have rolled off of Harry. They're both on their backs next to each other. About a dozen cans of varnish fly onto them from the sky. Oh, they yeah. They are opened, and really for me, it's not clear if that's sort of a result of the fact that they broke through scaffolding and maybe had another seesaw effect, or if, like, Kevin pushed something off but they come from about the same place that they landed on. So again, it's a huge arc for no good reason at all. Yeah, it's just like the seesaw in the beginning when Harry gets launched into the air. Yes. These cans get projected. Remember when they fell through the scaffolding, it was a seesaw moment. Yes. And those cans went up to like the three-story height and then came back down. And I will say, I did some research on this because I was curious. Varnish is not flammable. Okay. So if this was Kevin's doing, he was sort of trying to put out whatever fire he may have started with the kerosene rope. But it is toxic when swallowed, and both of them were screaming as it fell on them. So I feel like it's implied they may have swallowed them. Oh my gosh, that's... That's manslaughter then. I don't think that he even really planned that. I think that it was no, just he didn't set that up. an unfortunate. No. I like how you decided when like it wasn't flammable. You're like, mm, I'm, it's got to be manslaughter then, like because he didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was more of the the fact that it was on the scaffolding. Fair. And they fell through that w- more of an incidental kind of a thing. So I'm not sure it wasn't just a happy accident. Yes. Mm-hmm. I feel like none of the manslaughters in this film <laughs> Happy would have caused him any distress. I think Kevin would have been glad that it accidentally happened. Where in the first film, I think he may have may have been a little more distressed. Yes. So the final mm-hmm. trap of this movie against Harry and Marv. Harry and Marv are covered in birdseed by the pigeon lady because they're still got the varnish on them. Oh, yeah. And then pigeons fly at them. They are pecked and their feathers stick to them. And they are presumably, you know, scratched or whatever because the birds are trying to consume the bird seed. That's the final trap of this. So they're going to get scratched open and get some kind of bird disease. Yes. I do want to point out, while I don't think that this is going to kill them directly, I think that this is Kevin and I guess an extension because she kind of starts it up, the bird lady, killing a whole bunch of pigeons. Why did she sign off to do this? Because there's no way that varnish is not toxic to pigeons if it's toxic to humans. And they're eating. Maybe it's not enough a quantity. Maybe it's a. I don't know. Maybe it's just going to give them pigeon diarrhea. I hope so. But I also did have a thought as I realized that they were probably killing pigeons that maybe like because of Kevin's words, the bird lady's like, I I want out of this life, but (laughs) I got to just like cold turkey this shit. I can't just like slowly whatever. Like I got to just fully be done with this lifestyle and go back to see my (laughs) daughter or whoever it was. So she was just like, yep, cowabunga. Bye birdies forever. Cowabunga. (laughs) 
But yeah, so what, what we, where do we stand on Harry and Marv with the bird seed? That's completely just torture for fun. I don't think they'd die. That's true. That's just to humiliate them. Yeah. Okay, so these are our stats after Home Alone 2. We have seven kills. <laughs> we have only two lives. We have four manslaughters. We have no kills with an asterisk. We have two tortures for fun, and we have seven tortures for fun that would kill them. <laughs> Oh my god. Holy fuck. So let me read both separately so that everyone can hear them side by side. And then I'll tell you the total kill count of Kevin McAllister in these movies. Okay. And then we'll do a quick little bonus round with a parent trap. Yes. Okay. So Home Alone 1, he kills them six times. (gasps) He goes extra with his killing twice. He lets them live four times. He has five man slaughters. He has two tortures for fun. And he has three tortures for fun that would result in death. In Home Alone 2, he has seven kills. He has no kills that are above and beyond. He has two lives. He has four manslaughters. He has two tortures for fun. And he has seven tortures for fun that would result in death. In total, Kevin McAllister kills 13 times. (laughs) He kills with an extra flair twice. (laughs) He only lets them live six times. (laughs) <laughs> he commits manslaughter nine times. Oh. He tortures them for fun four times. And he tortures them for fun so hard that it results in death ten times. <laughs> he got such a taste for it. <laughs> that first film was just an appetizer. It really was. If you're counting, in total, out of 44 traps, 34 of those traps kill people. Wow. Insane. <laughs> That's like 80%. I don't math well, Absolutely. but fucking 90. It's like 90%. I don't know. He kills most of the time. This man is diabolical. Okay. Wow. He certainly is. All right. And that's before the Saw movies. And then he starts a legacy. Right. Honestly, I would, and this is a hot take. Mm-hmm. His traps in the Saw films are classier than. <laughs> yeah, he gets a refined palette later on. He like. Maybe it's maturity. Maybe it's the wealth. Both. It's both. Let's do the parent trap. Let's do the parent trap. A fun little bonus experience. It's a little bonus. Because I think this is what we said last time. The twins are pretty mischievous in a way that's like a little concerning. A little... They take things a little too far. I would say pretty concerned. Like that's honestly mega concerning for me. (laughs) Yeah. But it's a totally different scale, though, because I don't think there's ever any, like, murders in this situation. There are things that could accidentally result in death, but no murder. Okay. Are we considering torture for fun, but more like yeah. like as a prank, but it could kill them? Okay, okay, I lied. There is one that I think is a murder. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, I'm going to put the same categories in. We're going to have okay. kill. Okay. We're going to have kill with an asterisk. I don't think we're going to get that one, but... Why not? We have a live. We've got manslaughter. Most of them are going to be live, but I think a lot of them, because they're girls, they are savage. And there's a lot of just really demoralizing you here. Live, but you're roasted. (laughs) That's so true. Maybe we should add one because I don't know that kill with an asterisk is going to apply here. Maybe that one should just be specifically like a psychological or something. Like what what do you think is going to work there for... A roast? Boom. Roasted. Hashtag savage category. We'll let it come savage. up. Savage. I don't and know. And see what happens if it doesn't fit. It's going to come up pretty soon. All right. And then we'll figure we'll it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. okay. <clears throat> the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hallie and Annie are fencing. Ah. And they're within, you know, like a, a certain area. They leave the safe area with the adult watching them and start fencing much more brutally over obstacles. They're leaping over obstacles like hay bales and porches. Oh my god. Annie takes her sword, knocks Hallie off balance. She flies over the railing of this porch. Oh my god. (laughs) Into a narrow cement basin filled with water. Oh my god. Oh god. And we checked, (laughs) and the way she landed was miraculously she was unharmed. But if she had hit the back of her head on the the rim of that basin, which she was so close to doing, it would have brained her. (laughs) Please describe to me, was it like a sort of starfish backwards or what? Yes, she flew kind of starfish style backwards over a railing. (laughs) 
<laughs> into a basin. It was a narrow basin. Oh, no. It was like a trough for feeding horses. Yes, it was like a horse trough is the only thing we could have figured out what it is. Okay. It was clearly cement made. Like, it was also pretty obvious that it was, like, made of foam, really. But it looked like it was supposed to be cement. Right, right, right. It would have brained her. Right. Okay. So I think that is... Uh, <laughs> that feels like torture for fun with an asterisk. Yes. Torture for fun that would kill. Which one was this? Hallie was owning Annie or vice versa? Annie Annie did this to Hallie. Annie did this to Hallie. So Annie is out here torturing Hallie for fun. In case any viewers were forgetting, Annie is the one who's originally grew up with the mom and she's British. Yes. And Hallie is the one that grew up in the vineyard with Dennis Quaid. And she's Californian. Yes. So next... From the basin, Hallie reaches out, grabs Annie's hand, and yanks her face first (gasps) over the porch railing into the same basin. Jesus, fuck. (laughs) It's not deep enough. It's it's not a very deep basin. It's maybe (laughs) three feet deep. Mm -hmm. She flies in face first straight toward the ledge. Now, in the next shot where she falls in, she's like miraculously feet first all of a sudden, Uh. and she's fine. But like... If this were real, she would have gone face first into the ledge of this basin and been, been brained. brained. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is this, do you think, a manslaughter or do you think this is another torture for fun with an asterisk? Torture for fun with an asterisk. Okay. Because mm-hmm. both of them were fully intended to humiliate the other person. Fair. That's absolutely true. Okay, next I just have written down. (laughs) I wrote the words, Hallie's verbal savagery is a weapon of its own. (laughs) Because (laughs) she roasts Annie in a way that is so out of nowhere, so cruel, and like for what? Just for fucking fun? She destroys this girl? Just because she looks like her? Yeah. Because Annie is like, like they take off their helmets. Annie's like, oh my gosh, we look identical. And Hallie's like, uh, really? Because you look like a fucking freak, basically. She's like, you're ugly as hell. Good luck, though. And she implies that she needs a nose job. She does. Job. She's, she's basically, she's like, your, your ears stick out. Your eyes are too far apart. And your nose is hideous. But like, don't worry. They have doctors that can fix that. And like, <gasps> this is out of nowhere. So maybe... The asterisk we have for kill is not so much actual kill, but death by words. Well, in this case, I would say death by words. Yes. For sure. And that was Hallie you said who did that? Hallie. Hallie. Yes. Fucking killed her verbally. (laughs) We have found, and I think our facts will reflect this, that Hallie is the more brutal one of the two. That's wild. Yeah. Like by a lot. Okay. I'm excited. So Hallie's the one who's going to end up marrying Kevin McAllister. Yes, and it'll be a nightmare for us all. Yes. It makes sense because she's the American one. She would probably meet him. Yeah. Maybe they go to school together. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. Yeah, they go to college together and like it's such a meet cute. Let's make that movie. Yeah, they're like murdering people at the same time. It's like adorable. Beautiful. They're they're dumping bodies at the same dump site. (laughs) They catch eyes. Oh, okay. The next one, Hallie and Annie have just played poker and Annie lost. Yes. So that's the preface of this. And Hallie makes Annie strip down butt naked in front of everybody and like jump into a lake (laughs) at night. Oh, God, that lived in my head rent free for my entire childhood. Yeah, made us, you know, like little kid excited, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. But anyway, in the scenario... Hallie then steals Annie's clothes and leaves her outside wet at night, butt naked. And then I wrote, is it possible to die of embarrassment? (laughs) Honestly, maybe that's what the kill star is. It's just die of embarrassment. It's not verbal kill. It's not physical kill. It's just you have died by embarrassment. Yes. So once again, it's Hallie killing Annie. (laughs) Okay. Let me know when you're ready for the next one. I'm ready. Hallie is savage. So next, Annie and all the other kids in her group haul heavy furniture, (laughs) like full beds and heavy wooden chests and chairs, and they put them on the roof of a cabin (laughs) by themselves. No adult supervision or help. If I were going to camp with these girls, I would not do that. Like, the way the way that, like, maybe you could convince me to take one bed out there, 
sure. But the second it's like, okay, Amy, now pass me that bed. I'm going to stand on the roof. You pick it up and hand it to me. I would be like, the fuck I am. I am tired. It is 3 a.m. I am not a strong person. I am a child. Uh, I will be going to bed. Thank you. Yeah. How did they convince people? The grip they had on their fellow campers. Well, I'm calling this manslaughter because... Yeah. In the process of hoisting this furniture, you could crush yourself and die. Yes. A million times over. You are children. You're all 12 years old. They're all 12. And also, anyone trying to get the furniture back down, it could crush and kill. Yeah. Because it's not like they even fastened it up there. They just set it up on the roof. And also... And it's a sloped roof. Is the roof sanctioned for that? No. Is it liable to just cave the whole building in? It could. Who did this? Annie did that. Annie, Annie committing manslaughter. Jeez. Okay, but you are not ready for how Hallie responds tenfold. Oh, oh I think I remember this. I think I remember exactly what she does. Please tell me. Okay, this is eight steps. Oh, no. Are we going to count each one of them separate? Yes. Okay, let's go. Number one, the whole cabin mm-hmm. is strung up with tight string that I think if you, like didn't realize it was there because they're all waking up you could easily trip on and or totally garrot yourself like just choke yourself out on this string yeah is it like the fishing line that you could probably if you went at it with enough force like fully cut something with no it's it's more like string but it's pretty like twine it's like yeah it's like twine but they definitely could get strangled up in it you could depending on how strongly they attached it which they don't really show but you could obviously trip on it and it i think it's intended for that do you think this is a manslaughter or just a torture for fun? I think it's manslaughter. You could They could so easily have strangled someone up in there. That's so true. And this is Hallie? Hallie. Okay. Hallie for the next eight. Got it. Okay. Number two. Mm-hmm. The floor is covered in slippery goo. Yes. This is what I remember. Designed to make them fall over. Yeah. In case they were already going to trip. <laughs> and that's combined then with this string in the air. Like everything could cause them to choke out and die on this string. Honestly? Are we talking manslaughter or are both of those things torture for fun with an asterisk? Yes. No, you're right. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Number three is a stretch, but they covered one girl in honey (laughs) and a different girl in shaving cream. And I'm just saying if either of them happens to be allergic to those things, that could be an issue. True. That's a manslaughter, I think. Yeah. Also, though, how did those girls not wake up getting covered in goo at night time? (laughs) Honestly, it sounds like me. I could sleep through anything. (laughs) Yeah. Heavy sleepers. Okay. Number four, they startled one of them awake with like fake spiders. It's still, it's part of the string thing. I just think they could choke on the string because they jolted awake. True. I just (laughs) wanted to mention that. I feel like that one we could put as just regular torture for fun. Yes, that's torture for fun. Yeah. Because they didn't have to add that part. They just went extra for that. Yeah. Okay. Next one. They have a basketball tripwire fall from the ceiling. I don't think that would kill anybody, but torture for fun. It it could hurt if it hit you. Yes. It was it just one basketball? Yeah. Well, it was one basketball, and then it set off a ton of water balloons, which oh. wet the floors. And so I think that's another way that they could have killed everybody with the wet floors that are already goo. And that's a torture for fun, then. Yeah. With an asterisk, because they could have died. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then they have a very heavy, like I can't, I can't really express it to you, but it's a, it's a huge bucket, Mm -hmm. huge bucket full to the brim with like chocolate sauce, I believe. So it's very heavy held up by fishing line. Not very strong. Oh my God. (laughs) And they have it dangled over people's heads at the (gasps) front door. Oh no. So it could so easily, like it was rigged when you open the door, it sets off this trap and it dumps the chocolate sauce. But had it not gone perfectly, it's only held up by fishing line. You open the front door. If it fell on you instead, just like broke, yeah, your head and neck would get crushed. Mm-hmm. That would be a, a death. Absolutely. That would have been manslaughter. Like it didn't happen, but had it gone wrong, that would have been manslaughter for sure. Mm-hmm. So should we put that as manslaughter then? Yes. Okay. Damn. I forgot how goddamn brutal that scene was. I, right? I vividly remember the girl screaming and sliding and the way that I would have so quickly bonded together with every other girl and been like, okay, we are not hanging out with those freaks anymore. <laughs> like- well, the worst part is that that last one happened to adults. Like they, the adults were coming to check on them and got covered in this chocolate sauce. And then this one last thing happened. Okay. They slip on the floor, fly into the room, mm-hmm. and smash into a shelf. 
this big heavy shelf it does not fall over because this is not home alone oh. but it, in real life it would have fallen over and killed them that's a manslaughter yeah and then marissa and then it covered them all in feathers like they're hairy from home alone torture for fun <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hallie is savage. Jesus. I know. This is not to do with anything. I just want to mention that Hallie is the person that came up with the switch idea also. Like, she's just the devious one. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I, like, wish I could mark that down somehow, because that fucking is so stupid. It's hashtag savage is what it is. Honestly, you know what it is? It's a live. Hallie did a live there. Yes. A live, but it's so illegal. Which is why it needs to go on here, because like legally, one parent owns them. And it is a trick. And they can't just, and with no passport, they switch the country and assume a new identity. Yes. Like, that's not legal. <laughs> it's a whole trap, and they live from it, but it's a trap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, this is something Hallie almost did, but it's dangerous as heck, okay? Hallie is going to cut Annie's hair, and she <laughs> shuts her eyes. <laughs> oh my god i'm just like you is, are you trying to hurt your sister anyway he, on to the real thing that she does yeah like a second later she pierces her sister's ears with needles and an apple oh yeah that's like at least a major injury there's no way that wasn't heavily infected i'm trying to figure out where to put that that's a live yeah. That was once again Hallie? Hallie did that to Annie. Oh my god. Everything bad happened to Annie and Hallie was just decimating poor Annie. I always like liked Hallie more and now I'm like mad about it. I'm like, damn, poor Annie's the victim. I was always team Annie. I know, Annie was so sweet. You guys were always team Hallie and I was always team Annie. It's because we're sassy as hell, girl. Yeah, it was a sass. <laughs> She's got the charisma. <laughs> Okay, the next thing, this is now toward the end of the movie when they're trying to get rid of the dad's girlfriend or fiance, Meredith. Before we do this part, I just want to say, could you fucking imagine meeting someone who was this mean to you? Right. To the point that you could have died 20 times over and then somehow you go through character development enough to become not only friends and not only sisters, but like sisters who are so close nip you're attached at the hip. Best friends. Wild. It's crazy. I couldn't imagine that. There's also a moment that I thought was so insane. Like it didn't even make sense for Hallie to do this, but mm-hmm. like they've switched places, right? Yeah. And they call each other and Annie's like, oh my gosh, Hallie, I need your help right now because your dad's going to marry this horrible person. And Hallie says, um, I'm not going to bother helping you right now because I'm busy having fun with my mom. Okay, bye. <gasps> and I'm like, Hallie, do you understand the stakes? Literally. You're, this is your dad ma- remarrying someone horrible and you don't care because you're too busy being selfish with your mom. What a psycho. Hallie is crazy. I do see a romance though for her and Kevin. Yes. All right, continue with the second half of the movie now. We're killing Meredith. I mean, what? Yeah, this is when Meredith really gets tortured here. Okay, they bring a dog to this hotel that hates Meredith and she like goes to pet this dog. This dog growls viciously and tries to bite her hand. She pulls the hand away, but this dog would have fully attacked Meredith. Annie did this. Do we think that's torture for fun? Yes. That's torture for fun. Annie was like, let's fuck this woman up with a dog. Mm-hmm. Then now is the camping trip with Meredith. Okay. Annie and Hallie put numerous, enormous heavy rocks into Meredith's backpack <gasps> while Meredith is already out of breath panting from this hike because she's not in hiking shape. Which is wild because she's fit as fuck, but... She's fit as heck, but I guess not in a climbing way. Not a cardio way. I don't blame her. I'm not, like, overweight, but I still can't climb up my own staircase half the time to get to my apartment. Your staircase is steep as heck, though. That's fair. This feels like... Torture for fun. It's torture for fun, but I almost want to go torture for fun with an asterisk just because she could easily get a heart attack or overextend herself or something like that. Or fall over Mm -hmm. on these uneven rocks that they're climbing on. On the plus side, she does Mm -hmm. get an unintentional bomb ass workout, but. Yeah, true. Should we do with an asterisk or nah? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I think in the wrong circumstances, having your backpack weigh you down that much, you could fall over or overstress your body and die. Next, I don't really know which one of them physically does it, but they're both in on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would count this as Mm -hmm. both. They put a gecko, I think it's a gecko, but it's some kind of lizard. Oh, yeah. On Meredith's water bottle. She freaks out. So then they put it in her hair and then tell her it's there. She freaks out. And this gecko crawls into, into her, her mouth. mouth. 
Oh, that face that she makes lives rent-free in my head, too. I the feel, scream she does with her mouth around this gecko. I feel so bad for her. And mm-hmm. that, like, at the time, loved it. Now that I'm an adult, I feel so bad for this poor woman. I can't believe that she was even putting up with these little shits anyway. Literally, I would put it under torture for fun. Yeah. With an asterisk. Yeah. Because... Because she could have gotten some disease from that lizard. Lizards and, and geckos and, and those types of animals carry a bacteria that is very different from people. Yeah. So putting that directly in your mouth, she could have gotten like salmonella or something. Yeah. And who knows? And because we can't identify this gecko, we don't know enough. It could have been one that was poisonous to begin with. Who knows? Could have been. Yes. And it's like, even if we could identify it, they couldn't identify it. So they're out here just right, like. So they didn't know that it wasn't poisonous. Exactly. They were playing with fire there and were lucky they didn't get burned. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like the way that their dad is watching this all happen, whether or not he's like actually noticing that it's happening as it's happening, the way that he like is aware of it and doesn't even punish them once. I hate it. Not at all. Not even barely a scolding. He's like, just just let it happen. Kids will be kids. This toxic mindset. Mm-hmm. Just as bad as boys will be boys. Yes. Okay. There's only two left. So the next one. They put sugar water in a bottle and give it to her as bug spray. And so every mosquito in town is biting her. (laughs) So think about the type of disease you get from mosquitoes. If you get too many of any kind of bug bite, that's going to, it could provide an an allergic reaction. Mosquitoes are already a very dirty bug that can carry disease. So they carry so many diseases. Getting a ton of mosquito bites is begging for some kind of horrible health issue. So I'd call that torture for fun asterisk. I agree. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Here's one extra one that's just like a psychological savagery. (laughs) They give Meredith two sticks and tell her to like bang them together to ward off the mountain lions. But there's not even any mountain lions around. And she just like embarrasses herself and her fiance laughs at her. You know what that is? That's death by embarrassment. (laughs) <laughs> death by embarrassment yeah, absolutely <laughs> okay and then the last one here's the last one i know what you're gonna say because i know <laughs> how much you hate this one it, i've ranted about this a million times yes. and i think that's how this whole idea got brought up in the first it place it really might have been so please i'm gonna give it to you even though i'm not sure but i'm gonna give it to you anyway because of how passionate you are please go on your rant they wait mm-hmm until after Meredith takes, in her words, a big sleeping pill. Mm-hmm. And then they grab the inflatable mattress that she is sleeping on and drag it out and push it onto the lake. Yep. So she, under the influence of sleeping pills, like like a sedative. I did forget about the pills that does add to this, yeah. It really adds to it because if she had rolled out of bed at any moment, who knows how deep this lake is? Like, it's not big enough for her to float away and never be found again. It's a pretty small lake, but who knows how deep it is? She could have easily drowned Mm -hmm. because she's not even awake enough to swim right. Like, in the morning, she can swim. We see that she swims back to shore. But if she had rolled off at night... But did the twins know that? I don't think they knew if she could swim or not. Yeah, they didn't know if she could swim. This is a detail I wonder if you remember. Do you know if her air mattress that she was on was, like, deflated a little bit in the morning? I don't think it was. In the morning, I don't know. Most of the time in the morning, it will be deflated a little bit. And I can only imagine if you've been on it on water, it would have started to deflate if nothing else. Plus the elements, plus who knows what fish. Depending on where the... the air hose you know the yeah where you inflate it is water could have gotten in it too you you know something like that true Mm -hmm. and i'm just thinking that so that would like probably cause sinkage and cause possibly like her to just get tangled up no not know where to go and then strangle herself on it or something absolutely i think this was a cold-blooded murder yeah is the thing Mm -hmm. this was an intentionally murdering her moment Mm -hmm. absolutely And that was both, obviously, that did that. Yes. Until I started remembering some of the other details like that, I was sort of fully going to be like, I think it may just be torture for fun with an asterisk. But no, like there's a lot of factors that movie magic pretended didn't wasn't a thing that like, yeah, I think you're right, would have tipped it over the edge, especially with her being under the influence of a heavy sleeping pill. Because, God, the weird shit you can get up to on like an Ambien. (laughs) 
Yes. Mm-hmm. And her body was exhausted from the night before because of the hike and all the extra rocks and also because she refused to eat dinner. She did. Because she didn't want to eat trout. So she's weak and tired mm. and on a pill. If she slips into that water and is confused and wakes up underwater, she will not survive. Yeah, they were like, we will get rid of this woman at all costs. Literally. Even though our dad is happy. Oh. The one thing that I'm sad about is I'm sad that, like, the dad didn't realize in the middle of the night that she wasn't there because he wanted to bang while the kids were asleep, you know? (laughs) All right. This is the totals for the Lindsay Lohan parent trap. Here we go. Annie and Hallie each killed once. Annie did a death by embarrassment one time, and Hallie did that three times. (laughs) Annie did not do anything where someone would live. Hallie did two pranks where someone would live. Annie did one manslaughter. Hallie did three. (laughs) Annie did one torture for fun. Hallie did three tortures for fun. Oh my God. And Annie did four tortures for fun with an asterisk. And Hallie did seven, which means a torture for fun where they definitely died or easily could have died. Or maybe died. Or perhaps died off screen. Yeah. That's hilarious. Jesus goddamn fuck. So out of 27, Hallie did 19 of them. Oh my God. Amazing. That's more than half. Yeah, more than half by like a lot. This girl was dwarfing Annie's number. Annie's rookie. And some of those were joint efforts too. So like they both did them. Yes. For me, it feels like in all the ones that were both, Hallie is definitely the instigator. Annie's probably just like following along because now they're best friends. Yes. But like Annie clearly is the good twin and Hallie Mm -hmm. is the psychopathic evil twin. Yes. And that is why when they do run into Kevin McAllister, Annie is going to want nothing to do with him. And Mm -hmm. Hallie is going to marry the shit out of that man. (laughs) And uh, that'll probably lead to a second split in their friendship where Annie is like, wow, I knew from jump that you were bad news. Why was I friends with you for so long? Yeah. Like Hallie was a corrupting influence on Annie throughout the film, I think. And I think maybe at the end of this, when... You know, Kevin and Hallie together are so efficiently evil that Annie moves back to England and says goodbye and never talks to her again. You know what the the moral of this story is? Americans are trash. We are (laughs) terrible. Yeah, precisely. Only the worst of us came from England, I guess. This is a great, perfect representation of America. Yeah, it is. This sample size of three people, two of which are American, all of which are yes. <laughs> objectively have done bad things, is the perfect way to judge America and England, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, we do have one British lady in uh, Escape from New York, and she's nice to Kevin. She only commits murder to birds, and I don't think she means to. At least I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. That's up to interpretation. <laughs> I, I read somewhere someone listed her on a list of like top gay icons. And I agree with that so wholeheartedly. No, she absolutely is. I was like, wait, is this why I've always loved her? She is a gay icon. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, she's our lesbian queen. Yes. I ship her with Nicole Kidman from the AMC ads. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Have you seen that? That she's a gay icon too? Yes, absolutely. Those are two fabulous gay icons who need to be together. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed our wild episode of Fess Up, celebrating our 50th episode. That is all the ice breaking we can do today. If we break any more ice, then Kevin McAllister will come after us for fucking up his stairway trap. So that would suck. If you'd like to send us a question, message us on Facebook or Instagram at Fess Up Podcast. Send us an email at fessuppodcast at gmail.com. Tweet a question at us at fessup underscore podcast. And don't forget to use the hashtag obfest. We're also on TikTok at Fess Up Podcast. Send us new questions or let us know what happened when you used our icebreakers with your friends. Share our podcast with everyone you know and get the word out there about your three wacky friends. Woo! <laughs> That's it for me. I've been Amy Fess, the Spicy Fess. I've been Marissa, the Medium Fess. And I've been Ina, the Mildest Fess. And just so you know, Hallie and Kevin McAllister are the one true pairing. (gasps) (laughs) The most dangerous OTP.